Okay, so we have our scene set up, our, we have our monster, we have our ground. Um, let's talk a little bit about the first way you can start customizing your inspector window. And you've probably done some of this already, but we're gonna talk about attributes. And later on, we'll probably look at creating some custom ones and what that's like. But for now, you should know what already exists. So it's very easy. It's very simple to customize your uh, inspector window. So we'll make a new C-sharp script and we're just gonna call this, uh, we'll call this monster for now. And, and then later on, we'll probably break this out into a separate script. Our monster will have a monster script. Let's open that up. Okay, inside of our monster script, you might start thinking about the types of things you want your monster to have. So for example, you might have a private ring name for your monster. Now the first attribute that we can talk about is the one you've probably already seen a lot in my videos, which is serialized field. All this does is make it so that we can use a private variable. It's essentially drawing it to the, uh, the inspector. It does some other things, but don't worry about that. Um, we're gonna save this. We're going to jump back into Unity, let it compile. And you'll see that even though it's a private variable, we can actually type in a new one. So we'll give it skeleton. All right, so we have our monster name. So this is our serialized field. You know, pretty bread and butter, we'll use this a lot. The next one we might have is the header. So the header is just a simple way that allows you to um, put a little label above blocks of data in your inspector. So just to show you, if we go header, say general stats, All right? So it's gonna look like that. You will give it a label when you pass it in. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see how it gives us this fancy little label. It'll space things out a little bit and we can group our data into little blocks of information. So let's keep looking at this. Maybe we have some other stats down here. Maybe we have uh, some things that we might use in combat. So damage, we might have health, and we might have speed, okay. And just to show you, we can actually put a header over here, call this combat stats. So you can see everything is initialized to zero and we, we can fix that later. But more importantly, you can see how on our monster, we can label our groups of data. So it's, this is a really handy way of keeping your inspector very clean and tidy, right? Group things, uh, make it nice for the designer and the content developer to work with. Let's, let's look at a range slider. So maybe we have, for example, a, uh, let's see, float chance to drop item. You know, we could minimize this over here. We could hop back in and they could put in a value here, but if our intent is that it goes from zero to a hundred, then what does this mean, right? Like what does negative 20 mean? So it might be handy if we can clamp the values between two values, a low and a high, and then we can let the designer just push and pull things and make it really easy to work with. So another handy one is our range. So let's go back over here to here we'll do serialize field and we'll do uh, range. And if I open my uh, my parentheses like that, you can see a min and a max. So let's go zero and 100. Save it, come back in. See, it's still a negative 20, right? Like we were putting that in code before, but um, let's say now we, you know, we got it in the value it wants. And now the designer will drag it all the, way, all the way to the left for zero and all the way to the right for 100. Okay, so it's pretty handy. We can very quickly see a visual representation of a drop item chance. So range sliders are actually really cool. You can do a lot with that. Uh, again, very minimal code. We are just creating little, little blocks, little designations for ourselves that really quickly organize our editor. Okay, uh, another handy one, let's say if we had a, what are we gonna call this? Uh, range of awareness. In this range of awareness, we, you know, this is how far our monster can see inside the scene. So maybe, you know, we're way out here and we wanna be able to uh, see the player. We're gonna talk about gizmos later, so we can't really visualize that and see it, but maybe me as a designer, I, I don't really know what this is, right? Like, I'm, I'm like, range of awareness, What is what does that mean? Like some like what's happening right 
And so another handy thing we can do is we can add a tooltip. So if we put a little bracket here above any field over here, let's say tooltip. So we need to give it a string. Radius size where monster will see the player. All right, like how far away can the monster see? And it'll be a radius around the monster. Maybe you really want to communicate that to the designer. So we'll save it. We'll jump back in, hover over, see? We can add a little hover over tooltip, pretty handy. Um, these don't have any, but this one does. So kind of nice. You know, if we wanted to clamp this, we could make this a range value too. It's very easy and quick. You can already see how you could start doing that. And the last one I want to talk about is the text area. Just, I end up using this one a lot. Let's make a dialogue. So again, we're going to do serialized field. You know, this is a type of string and we'll call this battle cry, right? Like this is stored as the uh, dialogue for when we enter combat. Maybe the skeleton says something, right? Uh, battle cry. Now, if we save it and we hop back over here, we're gonna see this, right? Like maybe first we'll we'll separate that out, but you know, maybe if our, ba we wouldn't really want a long battle cry, right? But um, a narrative person is not gonna wanna work with something like this, especially if we had like multiple uh, lines or sentences or whatever. It's just not very usable. So maybe instead of that, first, let me put a little header here. All right, and we'll call this uh, dialogue. Again, we can do other things too, like tooltip. Maybe we'll say um, speaks dialogue when entering combat. And then what we're really looking for is the text area. All right, so we can actually pass in some uh, parameters if we want. We can decide how many lines and uh, there's other things you can do with that. But for now, I'm not gonna pass in anything. Just save it and show you what happens. Okay, so by default, it actually gives us a full line here and it's more of a paragraph style, right? We can, we can do something like that. A little, a little bit more options. And you can see that it already starts to scroll when we get too far, which you know is kind of handy. It's a little bit more usable, right? Like ideally as a dialogue person, you'd be working in a separate editor, but it's quick, it's easy to do it this way and it gives us a little bit more control. You can already see how we're starting to customize our inspector. This is the simplest way to do it, right? Like, it's not really editor scripting, but it is a way to customize how you're presenting data and make it a little bit more usable, which is uh, the goal of what we're doing. We'll continue building off of this, but for now you should be comfortable with attributes. You can, there's actually a lot more attributes that you can look up that are pretty useful. So uh, if you wanna know more, you can always explore that. But generally this is how we can use these little attributes to help organize our editor just a little bit more. So we'll, we'll continue to explore that later. We'll come back to it uh, and we'll keep diving deeper.